Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to start talking about the HTTP net package and we're going to write in this first section a very simple web server. And the reason why we're going to start with that is because a web server, I think, is sort of easy to understand. You use it every day when you go on the web and stuff. So it's a nice place to start instead of a generic, just like a web app, um, network application, TCP IP application. I think a web server is a nice place to start. And this also shows you Golang just providing these really, really nice packages that are very easy to use. There are few other languages where you can get up and running with like a web server um, in just a few lines of code. Let's jump in and take a look. Our web service, before we jump in though, we should know what we, our web service is gonna do. Again, it's a simple HTTP server. And all it's gonna do is allow us to make a request and get a message back, like see something on our web browser. So we're going to start out before we look at the code though, by looking at the packages and scrolling down to the net package section. And we can see there's the net package and it gives you all this portable interface to network IO, including TCP, yada, yada. Everything in Go is pretty much, you know, portable. Um, as I see most of these packages. And then, but the one we're going to really look at is the one below that, which is the HTTP package. And notice there are some other packages there too. And so we're going to jump in and start looking at that one because that's the one we're going to use. And they start off immediately showing you how they've provided some nice useful methods. Um, if you know HTTP, there are methods in there for get, post, um, delete, and so on. And they've provided a ton of nice methods for you. And if you want, for example, in the second ex example line there with a post, is how you can send an image to a server. You can post it from your client. But we're not going to do that. We're going to click on index and then we're going to jump down and look for this function called listen and serve. And listen and serve is going to allow us to create our web server because it already implements all the logic for us to be able to listen. And when a connection is made, start serving that connection. Now, if you don't know anything about web and uh, network programming, we just have to skip over something. You just have to accept. There's a lot of detail in network programming. Like you have to open up a port, you have to accept a connection, and then of course you serve that connection. And of course, it, net package gives you the primitives, but the HTTP package built on that and wrap these up nicely for you. You could see a simple web server there, but we're gonna write ours from scratch and we, I'm gonna explain as I go. So same as before, I'm going to create a main function here and, and write some text in it. Um, one of the things, like I said, the function we're going to use is the HTTP listen and serve um, function. And you can see it takes a string and then a handler. The handler is called a multiplexer, but we're going to use the default one. So we're going to specify nil. And just to make sure that though we're not lying, we're going to say, okay, we want to listen our web server to listen on port one, two, three, four. And if I'm not running a web server right now, or there's no, forget web server, there's nothing, no network application, TCP IP application listening on that port already, then when I try to use my web browser to go to that port, it should fail, right? So let's go take a look and see if that is exactly what happened when I run my program. And then, but before I run my program, I'm gonna go check and make sure that nothing is listening there. And there you go. There's nothing I can't connect because there's nothing listening on my computer on port one, two, three, four. Now, when I run my program and I go back to my web browser now and I do a refresh, then there it is. You can see now that um, it's telling me it's oh, 404, which again, this is all, these are error codes in HTTP again, a lot to HTTP protocol. If you've never used it, too much to go into. We would not be talking about Go, we'd be talking about something else. It's beyond the scope of this. Um, section in this series. But we can see it how um, it says no file phone and no page phone. And we can go back by killing our program and we get back no connection. So that proves that our application is opening that port. And so we, that's why we see the difference between no, can, unable to connect and um, error message 404. Now, how do we deal with handling a request of a particular um, path? Now, again, if you don't understand HTTP, we just have to accept. So there's this function here on the HTTP package called the handle func function. And basically what it allows you to do is specify a string or a path that you want HTTP to um, process. And there's some documentation in the server mux package on how this works. We can cover a little bit of it, but a little bit of it, but don't worry. 
um, about the details right now, just accept. And then there's a function here that says, when I see this path, call this function. And the signature of that function is HTTP response writer and HTTP pointer to, a requ to the request. And so let's just copy that sig function signature. And we're gonna say the path we want you to handle is slash and our function is gonna call index handler. And so this is our function signature right here, right? We can say we have W, which is a HTTP response writer. And then R is a pointer to the request for, that came in. And we're gonna pass our handle function here. We could have written an anonymous function, but we're gonna just gonna stick with um, named functions so it's easier to understand the code. So now let's um, look at the response write, uh, writer. Response writer, as you can see, is really a type that has this header function and also the write method, which we know comes from the io.writer. So we can just use io.write string to write to this writer because http.response writer implements the io writer interface so we can use io that write string to write the string so that's exactly what we're going to, we're going to do in line 16 and then if we go back and run our code now compile run and we refresh you can see there's the string that we've written um we can do something a little bit more ambitious though we can um, go back and prepare a string that represents an html document um, it's not going to be very fancy, but basically I'm going to have some heading and then I'll have a paragraph tag and some text. And here I'm going to replace it with the document. Of course, I always make this mistake. If your variable is outside of a function, you can't use the shortcut. You have to actually specify a variable. All right. So now that I have that um, and I correct my error here, I can go back and rerun my code now, compile my program and refresh my buffer. And there it is. And you can see up at the top, the title has changed in the tab. And also now you can see that um, the text has changed. And it didn't call for a lot of work at all on our part. All right, I think this is a great place to stop. Um, we did what we said we were gonna do, right? A simple web server. We can use our web browser to connect to it and pull up the text that our web browser, our web server serves up. Uh, thanks again for your time. Thumbs up the video, please. Please, please thumbs up the video. Subscribe if you haven't, spread the word. Um, I'll be putting out some information soon about the website I want to launch with course material and have free and paid course material. And of course, I'm going to create like a Twitter account and an Instagram account, and I'll let you know about all that. But um, definitely keep following and hopefully I can, and I'll, I'll be releasing stuff on YouTube too. So that's not going to go away after we finish with Golang here. I'm going to jump in and do another series. Okay, so don't worry. Both will be happening. Um, so take care. Have a great day. I hope you learned something.